PCs can hire a mercenary who comes complete with his own equipment, including armor, weapons, mount, and body. Or they can hire an able-bodied warrior and provide arms and armor. Troops that have their own equipment tend to be better trained, but more expensive. Troops without their own equipment have wildly variable abilities, but accept less pay per day. If you hire mercenaries who have expensive equipment, especially mounted troops, be prepared to pay more per day. The equipment of on the table does not include any magic items, which should be very rare among regular mercenaries. You can hire troops with no arms or armor, and equip them yourselves. Of course, you have to provide armor and weapons. The mercenaries understand that they do not own their equipment, but they are not responsible for damage to it or loss of it while fighting on behalf of the PCs. Upon completion of an assignment, they return the weapons and armor. There is always the risk, however, that some troops will steal the equipment, especially if they feel they were treated harshly. Some mercenaries quit if the weapons and armor are not of a certain quality, unless times are truly desperate. Warriors accept equipment that is beneath them without a problem. If the PCs offer lower quality equipment than that, however, the mercenary's attitude immediately becomes unfriendly and must be brought up to at least indifference before they will accept the assignment. Mercenaries happily use equipment that is better. This benefit improves their attitude automatically. It is typically, no, it is typical for mercenaries to get a share of the loot acquired during adventuring. The exact amount is set by haggling between the party and the mercenaries. Some mercenaries are hired in units and have their own leader. Typically, leaders are also warriors. Mercenary leaders with their own equipment, which is always the same as that of their troops, receive four times the wage of the troops they command. For example, a leader of, a, of light-mounted mercenary troops wage four silver pieces, earns 16 silver pieces per day for himself. Mercenary leaders who receive equipment from their employer, which may be better than that of their troops, if the employer so desires, make six silver pieces per day. Leaders are just that. They give orders to their troops, negotiate on their behalf, and enforce discipline. Hiring a squad of mercenaries with a leader means that the warriors are familiar with each other's tactics and fight well as a cohesive group. The downside is that P that a PC cannot discipline a mercenary who is causing problems without going through the leader. Some leaders resent this sort of behavior. If a mercenary group leader dies in combat, the attitude of the group worsens. If their attitude drops to unfriendly, the group considers leaving as soon as the combat is over. If their attitude drops to hostile, they abandon the fight as soon as it is safe for them to do so. Different types of troop spe troops specialize in different forms of warfare. Foot skirmishers are some of the cheapest type available. They specialize in harassing the enemy with ranged weapons, withdrawing as soon as their attack is complete or when, they, when there is any organized retaliation. Skirmishers who use bows do not attack as a group, instead picking out individual targets as they become available. Elven and halfling mercenaries excel at this sort of warfare. Mounted skirmishers have even more, no, even greater mobility, attacking the flanks and rear of enemy lines with lightning fast strikes. Like foot skirmishers, they are good for hit and run attacks, but tend to wither beneath a concerted offense. They ride light war horses with no barding and are usually very skilled in the saddle. Slightly more heavily armed and armored than skirmishers, lightfoot troops are meant to stay in more prolonged fighting. Such troops include archers, bows and crossbows. 
who march in in formation and attack in mass. Peasants, peasant Levi's usually fall under this category, although they are commoners, not warriors. Fast and mobile, light mounted troops are good for exploiting weak spots in the enemy's formation. They are expected to stay in combat once they engage, although they retreat as soon as things turn sour. They wear primarily leather and studded leather armor to reduce weight. The staple forces of an army, medium foot troops, are designed to be balanced against most situations. They are well armed and armored, capable of crushing lighter equipped enemies and able to hold their own against heavier troops. They include pike and spear troops who are good against mounted opposition. City guards in wealthy communities tend to be medium foot troops. Medium mounted troops fill the same row as heavy mounted troops but cost less to fill. They have decent armor, sca sca scale mail, chain mail, and occasionally breastplates and weapons that are more powerful than those of light mounted troops. They ride heavy war horses with light barden, barding such as leather and studded leather. These are shock troops meant to overwhelm the enemy from the first blow. They wear the heaviest and finest armor and they use the most devastating weapons. Heavy foot soldiers are likely to be found in the employ of lesser nobles and knights, since they are among the few who can afford such expensive equipment. Heavy mounted troops tend to be masters of the battlefield, capable of powerful charges. These troops can break through the enemy lines in a single attack. Heavy mounted troops wear half plate or banded armor and make extensive use of lances, war hammers, and other devastating weapons. They ride heavy war horses with heavy barding, making them slow but extremely difficult to injure. Mercenaries, being members of the warrior class, are proficient with all simple and martial weapons, all armor types, and all shields. However, not all troops have access to good equipment, so they fight with whatever they can get. Members of peasant Levi's might be skilled in the weapons they possess, but this is not always the case. Commoners are proficient with just one simple weapon. Warfare takes place not just on the battlefield, but sometimes above and even below it. Many other races are willing to sell their fighting skills to the highest bidder. Some types of troops are considered exotic because they are either rare or normally considered enemies of those who employ them. Because of their very nature, exotic troops are found in a variety of places, specialize in drastically different forms of combat, and ask varyingly prices for their services. Those who wish to hire evil mercenaries had better be able to prove they are more powerful and willing to use that power than they, there would be hirelings. Using threats, intimidation, or violence is often the only way to get creatures such as goblins and orcs to take orders from anyone not of their race. Many non-human troops are motivated by desires other than money and may demand different methods of payments. Some cultures consider slaves to be worth more than gold. The noble Asimar rarely serve as mercenaries, considering such employment to be a sinister to be sinister and evil. Sometimes, however, individuals are found who sell their sword to employers that they deem worthy. These Asimar are usually fanatical in their destruction of evil. They are also likely to turn a vengeful eye towards employers who, suspect, who they suspect of not following a strict code of goodness. Asimar expect to be treated with respect and they take a dim view on intimidation tactics by their employer. Bugbear 
Sheer greed motivates these creatures, and they will work for anyone that can provide them with adequate loot. They have an extremely short attention span and must be continually motivated by money or threats. They usually do not negotiate beyond, if you fight for me, I'll give you gold. Bugbears also accept slaves as payments. They are good skirmishers, but collapse under any prolonged and disciplined assault. Centaur Young male centaurs sometimes leave the safety and boredom of the herd to find glory in combat. If they cannot find any battles on their own, they seek out the elves and humans who need some extra muscle. Centaurs are hired as mounted troops and prefer to pepper the enemy from a distance with bows before making devastating charges with their heavy lances and hooves. Centaurs hate to go underground or enter buildings and will not work for anyone who intends to venture into a dungeon, castle, or other structure. They also balk at being treated like pack animals and refuse to carry more than their personal gear. Gnolls are foul creatures that delight in destruction and terror. Any person who can tolerate their despicable behavior will have powerful troops to work with. An employer must keep them well fed and use harsh discipline to prevent them from abandoning their tasks. Goblin Goblins make cheap troops, often asking half or less the normal pay that a human warrior would demand. However, they are difficult to control and respond best to intimidation rather than reason or incentive. Goblins are treacherous in the extreme, so an employer should continually watch his back when payday comes around. Goblins work best in groups, requiring no few than ten for any real effect. They will likely flee when the odds turn against them. Sometimes to remember if you are depending on steadfast troops. Hill Giants Dull, witted, and greedy hill giants are not so much hired as bribed. A prospective employer usually has to, an op to offer a large quantity of food in addition to money and treasure. Hill giants are fearsome in combat and act as mobile artillery pieces, lobbing enormous rocks with the strength of a small catapult. However, they are unpredictable and pose most, almost as great a threat as their allies as, as to their enemies. Hobgoblin Hobgoblins are disciplined and ruthless. They understand the chain of command and they make perfect skirmishers light foot or medium foot troops. They readily form bands and actively look for conflicts. Because of this hard-nosed attitude, hobgoblins expect to be paid well and will refuse and probably attack someone who makes a poor offer. Hobgoblin warriors prefer to receive their orders from hobgoblin captains and sergeants rather than directly from their employer. Kobold even more so than goblins, kobolds require extreme close attention from their employer to get the job done. Hired in bands of ten or more, they are useful for bogging down an enemy with mob tactics. Kobolds are cowards and should only be used against enemies that they are sure to beat, usually through sheer numbers. Kobolds do not bargain well, and they usually have to be intimidated to respond to orders. Minotaur Minotaurs make devastating troops, but take a lot of coaxing to be persuaded to fight for just one side. Sometimes, in the heat of battle, a minotaur becomes consumed with bloodlust and attacks anyone within striking distance, including friendly troops. The Minotaur can easily go head to head with an armored knight. Minotaurs quickly grow impatient when combat is not imminent and will either leave or attack their employer out of boredom. <laughs>